We're going to talk about distortion. And I want to emphasize a point about distortion before we go into it, and I want to emphasize it during that, and I want you to take, a, take it away. The tape does not factor into distortion. You're going to meet other guys in your career and all that stuff like that, and say, well, what about the mounting tape? The mounting tape does not factor into distortion. As far as, and I'll explain when we go there, but as far as all of this stuff is concerned, the plate does not know whether it's steel or mounting tape under it or cork. It does not factor in. Okay? Now, you might even ask me after, what about the tape? Okay? If that happens, we need to talk about it again until we beat that thing out of your head. Okay? And here we go. There's a... Uh, Another thing that we face in, in Flexo that you guys don't face in Offset is called distortion, right? Distortion is pre-shrinking a plate. To distort a plate for this purpose is to pre-shrink it by a predicted and correct amount so that when it's it wrap around a cylinder, it's the correct length after the phenomenon of it fanning out and distorting because it is wrapped around a cylinder, right? So let's walk through this. Let's say you have a piece of film. We're talking about uh, film-based plates. In other words, there's direct to plate, computer to plate, flexible on. They still have to show distortion, but there's no film involved. But for the sake of this illustration, I want to use film and uh, this one. All right. Now let's say that on this film, you had the letter T. You get the idea, right? Now, your plate material is down here. This is your film. This is your plate. And during the exposure process of making the plate, it's very similar to a, a offset plate, you're going to have light traveling down through the film, right? This is going to, the black image, black round is going to block the light, and this T is going to come down here and show itself up on the plate, right? Light is going to come through and it's going to expose this area. Then when we process the plate, certain parts of it wash away, leaving the raised part that got exposed to the light. It's a photosensitive material. When it's made, first the back is exposed and the floor starts to get built as light migrates through it. You time it so that it stops at a certain point. You turn it around, you expose to the film, the exposure starts to bring the image down to meet the floor. That's all done, pre, you know, but calibrated and stuff like that. When you end up, this part over here, above the floor where you didn't expose to and where there was no exposure from the top, gets washed away and you're left with this. That's how a flexible plate is made, simply <laughs> said. Okay? So now, but here's the thing that happens with a flexo plate. So you now, but you see, it's, it's, it's exposed in the flat. It's exposed while the plate is flat. Now here's the phenomenon that happens. The plate is like this. This is the plate. This is the image on the plate, and it's got a, a backing. I told you about, right? The rigid backing. Maybe and this is, yeah, in our mylar, which is like I think Dupont's name for polyester. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you wrap this plate around the cylinder, right, and you have your cylinder, and you have the plate wrapped around it, let's ignore the tape for right now, the, the radius, let's say, from here to here, is less than the radius from here out here, all right? Now, when this plate is wrapped around this cylinder, the outer part, of the, the rigid backing does not allow that the backing stays still. So what happens is that the image accommodates its new diameter by fanning out. Okay? So now, that, whereas that image was exposed at 100%, it's grown out to greater than 100% this way. Okay? It just so happens that that's predictable. And this is what it is. Distortion is the relationship, the distortion factor we call it, 
is the relationship between the overall print diameter and then the diameter represented by that overall print diameter taking away twice the soft part of the tape, the plate. That means there's a little bit of uh, now let's look now let's think about the mylar. And remember the mounting tape does not count because distortion occurs from that mylar out. If you expose this plate and expose it in the flat, imagine that the mylar had an emulsion on it and it was also photosensitive and that you were able to expose it and process it and see that image on that back, on the inside of the back where it meets the plate material. You can, you can visualize as you wrap it, its dimension does not change. The dimension changes from that surface of that hot mylar out as the, the, the resilient part of the plate fans out to accommodate the new diameter. So this is what we're interested in. We're interested in the ratio between, you, you could call it, uh, let's talk diameter rather than radius, because this, you know, not to confuse things. So the plate is also on this side, right? With the backing. Now, in this case, the plate is 0 0.067 thousandths inch. The back, mylar backing is 0 0.05 inches, okay? That means that the soft part of the plate is 0 0.062 inches. You agree with that so far? Overall plate thickness, the hard backing, the soft part is 0 0.62. Now, the influence of that soft part on the diameter is, happens twice. It, it, you, know, it ha you have to take twice that thickness to appreciate its difference. Its, uh, it's a relationship to the diameter. So twice that is 0 0.124 inches. I got that right that time, right? That that is equals two times the soft part. I'll call it. Okay? That's two times the soft part of the plate. 0 0.0124. So now the overall print diameter in the case of the 64 tooth was the overall print, 2.547. Overall diameter, and this is for 64 tooth, equals 2.547 if we did our math right, okay? So if we take it now, so then taking away twice the soft part, 0 0.124, let's go ahead and do that, we'll have that number, 0 0.124 we come up with 324.2. 2.423 is the diameter of everything up to the soft part of the plate. Now, all we have to do to calculate distortion is take the, that diameter, 2.423, and divide it by the overall print diameter, 2.547, and that equals our distortion factor. Can you do the math? <laughs> I wrote an article on this, so you can put it on the website. Yes. Hey. Hmm. Yeah, he turned around. He said that, and I was like, hey, "You want me to figure that out?" No, man. No. Let me get like no. All you need to know is that this thing, the distortion factor, mm -hmm. and if the image length is not right, maybe there's a problem with distortion, and let them figure it out. Mm -hmm. You get this thing running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. All right. Now, how do we? Well. Or oh, you're getting ready to do the math. Oh, no. do the math, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just walk. <laughs> he said, yeah, I did it for myself. <laughs> oh, get on my desk. <clears throat> that's point .95. If you want. Um, you want I want four decimal places. I want four decimal places. Well, three decimal places. Point .9513. Zero point nine five one or one three, okay? If that's valid, 0 0.95, that's close enough. Guess what that is? If you're, if you're gonna use a 64 tooth cylinder, whatever the final image length is, let's say eight inches, you multiply it by 0 0.9513 when you expose it in the flat and it'll grow to 100%. Oh, your, mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Hmm. You see what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? I, I can't figure out the math, but yes, I do see it. Yeah, I did yeah, see that. Yeah, don't worry about the math. Now check this out. So, 
your the operator's assumption should hopefully be that the distortion is correct. The distortion, if it's incorrect, will manifest itself like this. It's wrapped around the cylinder. You have this gap here, right? This gap will be too wide or too narrow relative to the others. If the distortion is correct and it's stepped correctly, the images will be fairly equidistant. Yeah, yeah. If it's a 64th inch discrepancy or something like that, that can be account uh, 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 that can be accounted for by tape variation, you know, something like that. It's negligible. But I mean, gosh, this is a 16th of an inch. Mm -hmm. You may have to look at your distortion factor and see if it, the correct distortion.